Okay, we're going to start here right now at 5 o'clock. Uh, we acknowledge that the land in which we gather is the traditional unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq uh, First Nation. Called to order. Any declarations of conflict of interest? Seeing none. See none. On the agenda, we have full agenda, but uh, we do have a closed agenda, and uh, we're trying to sort of make sure that we keep this meeting tight because of another presentation afterwards, two or three. Okay. Need someone to move the approval of the agenda. Moved by Councillor Ramsey, second by Councillor Bernard. All those in favor? Okay. Adoption of the previous draft minutes. You have the regular meeting, January 8th, 2024. And another full schedule of special, median, special meetings, January 16th, January 22nd, and February 7th. Need someone to move the adoption. Moved by Councillor Ramsey, second by Councillor Bernard. All those in favor? Okay. Business arising out of the minutes. No business. Yes, Councillor Aguilar. Just uh, anyway, it's nothing serious. Just a little clerical on um, on page uh, five of the digital copy on the uh, uh, resolved. Um, we're talked about uh, Kerry 10 0, Councillors Beck and Twill left the chambers as they were in conflict regarding the resolution. I probably should say Kerry 8 0 instead of 10 0. Can you note that? Uh, you, read, you read your minutes there, Councillor uh, McAleer. That's job well done. Any more? Okay. So, further reports. Um, planning and Heritage is first, but I just want, to, she'll give uh, the reason why we don't have any resolutions um, in terms of from planning uh, meetings, planning board meetings. And then, as I said, we're going to 610. After 610, we're going to number seven, closed session. So we just want to uh, move it as quickly as possible. Also, we'll be doing electronic votes. So you will be using your, uh, using your pad to, to vote. Uh, that's why Rory is uh, sitting next to us. Councilor Twill, do you want to say something? Yeah, I do have a question. Uh, on the report or on what? A planning, yeah. No, she didn't, she didn't present it yet. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Planning and Heritage, Deputy Mayor Yankov. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, good evening, everybody. Um, <clears throat> so... Uh, the Design Review Board met on January the 15th. Copies of the reports, minutes, and resolution are in your package. The Affordable Housing Advisory Committee met on January the 16th. Again, a copy of the minutes are included in your package. The Planning and Heritage Committee met on February the 1st. Again, report and minutes in your package. Planning Board was scheduled to meet on February the 6th, but was canceled due to the weather events. So we have, um, we have uh, rescheduled our meetings. And the Heritage Board did not meet um, since our last regular meeting of council. And um, there's no first or second readings, but uh, we do have one resolution, and that's um, from Design Review Board. And folks, we don't often have uh, a resolution from Design Review. Um, <clears throat> so I, d I made some notes just to explain to you why it's here tonight. And um, so it's inclu the, we included the design review resolution in this case because the design review board only chose to go with one of the recommendations of the design reviewer and not the full complete set of recommendations as he had provided. As per section 3.14.3, design review process, subsection D um, of the zoning and bylaw, where the design review board does not support the recommendation of the design reviewer, then the design review board shall make a recommendation to council and council shall determine the disposition of the application. Because of the board being selective in this case and not going with the full suite of recommendations that were put forward, we had to trigger this part of the bylaw and forward matters to you tonight. 
um, to make a final determination. So um, if you have any questions, um, I'll do my best to answer. And if you have any questions in terms of my, my report, and we also have um, our, both of our managers of planning and heritage here with us this evening. So thank you very much. And again, I know if you've said this before, Deputy Mayor, like, but the questions have to pertain to the report. That's what we're asking, correct? Of, of course, yeah. yes, of course. Okay. Councilor Twill. Thank you. Um, I wanted to bring up an issue uh, that's been in the public news uh, several months ago. Is it in the report? No, it's not. No, the okay, we're not dealing with it. No, hold, no, hold no, it now. no. I can ask, no, Mr. No, Mayor, no, no, Mr. Mayor. No, I can ask no a we're not dealing with issue. it. It's the report. You can send a letter, an email to the chair no, no, or the Mr. managers. Mayor, no, no. Mr. Mayor, I, I've, I, I've, I'm asking. I want a legal opinion. Yeah, we can get a legal this, opinion. No, you know what? This no. is, this no, is no. getting out of hand. Yep. It's no, it is not. Hand, Mr. No, Mayor. thank You're you. Trying to shut down no, uh, councilors' ability to represent, Councilor and Beck, to bring up issues that are important, Councilor Beck, to the community. Yep. I want to leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Councilor Beck, we'll get that. Right yeah, we're not getting it now, Councilor Beck. No, we're not. We're not getting it. No, Councilor. Sit down, please. Sit down. Thank you, Councilor Beck. You know, again, this is a disrespect not only to this office. But to me personally, when I hear that, yeah. now I'm not going to move any further than what was said here. But again, this office has a role in this municipal government. You again just disrespected this role and me personally. But you know what? Disrespect. No, I'm not re disrespecting you. We are mo if it's not in the report, if it's not in the report, you know, it is. And play, play on it. Councillor Beck, Councillor Beck, Councillor Beck, Councillor Beck. Yeah. Thank you for that, Your Worship. Um, I just have uh, one question, or, or actually two questions, I guess. Um, I have had some questions. Uh, first off, on page 23, Deputy, if, uh, when, it have, when we have motions, do we note who is opposed to motions? Do we note that in our minutes, or is that a practice that we should be noting? Only if someone asks for, to record the names. That's when it, it's recorded. Someone has to ask. Okay. To record the names. Okay. I just see most of our resolutions have it. Most of our resolutions do have it. I think just sort of right. maybe for consistency. That these are committee reports. Yeah. Planning board. Yeah. Yeah. There's a difference. Yeah. But in the future, if someone wants to record it. So it only applies to council resolutions? Yeah. Not that's right. Okay. Go Unless ahead. someone asks, I want the vote recorded. Who voted for? Who voted against? No problem. Thank you. Um, I've, I have had some questions, Deputy, about the uh, 184 Great George Street. And I noticed it was in here that it was going to be brought to the next agenda for Planning and Heritage. Is that going to be on our next Planning and Heritage Committee meeting? I didn't, sim maybe I missed it. Could you maybe um, update us on that? Deputy Mayor? Sure, it should be on our next um, agenda, and if it's not, it's an oversight, so maybe I will ask our manager of planning to um, address that for us to make sure that that will be on our next agenda, 184 Great George. And if it isn't yet, it will be. Thank you. Is Donna going to speak to it? Um, I'm not sure. Are you speaking to it, Donna or David? Thank you, Your Worship. So that's not an item that's on the agenda that will go to the Planning and Heritage Committee tomorrow. That's the meeting scheduled for tomorrow, but I don't know if David wants to give a quick um, update on the matter. Uh, through the Chair, Your Worship, just to address that site, um, this is the site of the former Ultramar gas station, I understand, at the corner of Great George. Um, just for Council's clarification, the City did receive a demolition permit um, uh, last year for this site. Um, all buildings and structures have since been removed on that site. However, to this point, there's been no further applications submitted to the City regarding that piece of property, and it currently remains uh, vacant at the current uh, point in time, so. Deputy? Do you have another question on that, second question? Well, uh, 
Yeah, I just guess my question was it, in the minutes it said it was going to be on our next meeting, and when I looked at our agenda, I didn't see it there. And I, and I was just wondering if it was an oversight or if there was some update on it. But if it's not going to be on our, it's not going to be on our next meeting, it'll come up at some other yeah. point in time. Good. Thank you. Deputy? Just once we have an update on that, then we'll make sure it's on our next committee meeting. Yeah. But I believe David does know that we do have a design review that was completed on that site, and there are renderings of what it will look like. So we've already checked off those boxes, and that was a year ago that was done. Councilor Twill. Point of order, arising a point of order. I want a legal opinion in my ability. Yep, it's to not coming now. My constituents yep. and bring up an issue yep. that's relevant yep. to, to the community and. And being and now being restricted yep. and, and having that inability to do so. Yep. So I want a legal opinion. We'll get that opinion. Yeah, no, no have... it has to go through this chair. Please sit down. I want to get this meeting through. You'll get the legal opinion. I've already asked legal counsel to do it. I just and, want it on the public you... record, ladies yep. and gentlemen. I feel quite strongly Thank you. that I'm being undermined no. and interfered no. with my job no. as an elected official. Thank I'm you. I'm really, really upset about this. Thank you. Councilor McCabe. I think it's just important to note that we are dealing with what's on our agenda when we're in our public meetings, what's in our reports. If there is things we know that a notice motion can go through the right channels, which is back to committee that can be discussed and then discussed when it gets to council. Yep. Four hour meetings are getting long. Yep. Thank you. Any more? Okay. So can we move on to the next item? Oh, no. Resolution? And if you go to page 56 of your digital copy, that's where it is. Thank you, Your Worship. Planning and Heritage Committee Resolution Number 1, uh, Design Review Board, moved by Deputy Mary Yankoff, seconded by Councillor McCabe. Be it resolved that the design reviewer's recommendation that the developer be required to provide an eight-foot step back along the seventh and eighth stories of the building that would face west towards Prince Street to achieve the equivalent of a 70-degree angular plane and that these design changes be made um, a requirement of future approval and construction of the proposed building at 199 Grafton Street, uh, 156 Prince Street. PID 342790. Be accepted and supported. Questions, Colin? So I'm just going to turn on my vote here. Yep, just one second. We're doing the electronic vote. It's coming, it's coming. Yeah, just one second. Okay. Vote, please. Now I have to know if you've all voted because then I have to tell Tracy. Good. Okay. Hold, 10-0. I don't know, that's good. Close. Uh, nope, now we can go back to, I think we have a second reading, or is that under this? Nope, it's not. Good. So we can move to 6.2, Economic Tourism Cultural Development. And that's Councillor Trevor McKinnon. Thank you, Your Worship. Economic Tourism Cultural Development Committee met on January 9th and January 22nd. The Arts Advisory Board met on January 11th. Minutes from these meetings are included in your package. There's one resolution for consideration in your package and there's two additional resolutions to follow in closed session. Um, a few departmental uh, highlights. I recently had the opportunity, along with department manager, to participate in the Quebec-Charlottetown City Municipal Partnership Mission in Quebec. Highlights of the trip included multiple discussions with numerous elected officials from Quebec City and Calgary. Best practices, tours of Quebec-based Charlottetown landmarks, as well as topic-specific visits and tours focused on public art, 
public spaces, economic projects, heritage, and the renowned Quebec Carnival. The low tourism season is receiving a much needed injection uh, from numerous recently hosted events such as the Charlottetown Ringette Tournament, Prince Edward Gymnastics Classic, Spud and the Sweetheart Hockey Tournaments, among several others. The Ice City Festival is currently underway for a number of weeks, and the Jack Frost Winterfest rolls into town this weekend. The next couple of months will also bring prosperity through event tourism. Uh, stay tuned for a number of high-profile signature events announcement over the next couple of months. Such announcements started recently with the news of the Harlem Globetrotters, Harlem Globetrotters tour stop at East Link Center this spring. Oh. So if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. If not, uh, Manager Wayne Long and Doug DeMay is here as well. Thank you. Okay, again, the try to keep the questions geared to the report. I know that Wayne and his staff do a lot of work in preparing these reports, and we do have committee members that are sitting here in the council that partake in those standing committee meetings. Councilor Twill. At, a, pre, at uh, a previous council meeting a couple of months ago, I'd like to have the opportunity to ask a question. Sure. Looking for an update. Go ahead. Okay, great. So it was in the minutes before, right? Pardon me? It was in the minutes before. It was brought up at a committee meeting. Okay. Yeah. yeah, okay, good. So the question is, recently, and I brought it up before, uh, there's, there's concern about shutting off Queen Street from Grafton to Water Street. It was brought up at a committee meeting I've had an opportunity to talk to some members of the business community that are very, very concerned about the process. In fact, I even understand that the Downtown Business Association is uh, in the process of conducting a survey to see where the business community would stand. Just a small point second. of order on this, if I, if I may raise Go ahead. speak to this. Um, <clears throat> this actually was brought up in January's meeting, um, when Councillor Twill asked, um, he was referring to the minutes, but this item was actually Just never in Councilor. the minutes of that Councilor economic Twill. development um, committee meeting. One and, um, and so therefore, I think that um, Councillor McKinnon can probably speak to this, um, but this was never ever a discussion item on the, in, the, um, in that department. And in the, so therefore, um, I don't think we should be talking about something that has never ever been in the minutes. And it was not, Councilor McKinnon, and it was never in the minutes. Thank you, Your Worship. Yes, uh, Councilor Tweel, you did mention that this was in the, previously mentioned that this was in the minutes. This was never in the minutes. This was a discussion that we had prior to a committee meeting. It was never discussed at a committee level. So it was, it was never put on the floor. It was never discussed. It was never brought up other than outside the committee. So, no, no, Councilor McKay. And again, I think I just want to go back Jesus. to reiterate if that if we're going to stick to the new process of following what we're in our yeah. reports, the only thing we want to talk about in this regular yeah. meeting of council is what's in our reports. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Councilor Twill, yeah. sum up. Yeah. No, Councilor well, Twill, again, he said they weren't in the minutes. They weren't in the minutes. You said they were. I went through the tape. Okay. You did say it was in the minutes. Let's okay. Okay. leave this to go back to the committee. Finish. We're going back to the you, committee. You brought it up. I did not. Yes, you did. You brought it up. I you did. brought it up at the committee at meeting. At the committee meeting you brought, before okay, the meeting finish. started. Are you before the meeting started. He's Have a seat. So you brought it up. Have you said you had a discussion with a cabinet minister. That and I'm was, looking for, I'm looking for an That update. was not in the open meeting. Have a seat. Oh. Like, you know, I, 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 no. Again, this, this, this is, this is a great way to start off. No, it is, it is. Okay. I, excuse me, we're going to move on. We're going to move on. We do have a resolution. Are there any other discussions, any questions on this report? Seeing none, we do have a resolution, and it's on page 154 of your digital copy. Thank you, Your Worship. Economic, Tourism, and Cultural Development uh, Committee, resolution number one, moved by Councillor McKinnon, seconded by Councillor McAleer. 
Be it resolved that Council repeal the existing cultural policy P-MO-2 and replace it with the draft amended cultural policy P-CD-01 as attached effective February 12, 2024. And further that the Mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. Okay. Questions come, I'll just one sec. Oh, Councillor Beck. Go ahead, Councillor Beck. <coughs> I don't have a question, I just have a comment. Um, when I was looking through the draft policy that we had, that was largely done by uh, Doug Dume, um, who's here in the building, and um, I guess I, I just want to give a, a tip of the hat because I think oftentimes what happens when we go to public consultations, people might wonder whether what we heard was incorporated into anything that we do. And I think this is a shining example of how Doug seriously listened to what was being said. It, if you look through the what we heard part and you look at what was captured and look at how the report comes out and then you look at the policy, there's a direct correlation between the two. So I think it's a good, um, I guess we would take comfort in looking at the fact that public consultations do work uh, we, do, we do listen, and I think it's important when, the, uh, when that work gets reflected in our policies, I think it's important to highlight that. So just want to highlight that. Good job, Doug. Thank you for doing that and making sure that our resident voices are heard. So thank that's you. all I have to say about that. Questions called? Okay. Ready to vote? Okay. I have to tell Tracy, did everyone vote? Okay. Eight to zero, we have two that didn't vote. Councillor McAleer. Councillor Bernard, didn't vote. Resume. Okay, Councilor McClure, did you vote? Okay, 10 0. We'll leave that up. Accept. And we're back. Okay, thank you. So the next report we have. Is environment sustainability, and that is Councillor Terry Bernard. I'll do my best to answer them. A couple of highlights, though, I'd like everyone to know: um, a second public consultation period was held for the 10-year public transit plan. Drafts of the new routes and schedules were shared, and over 400 people provided feedback through a detailed survey or virtual info session. The plan and public consultation was well covered by the media, and we thank them. The draft strategy was also discussed within the Capital Area Transit Coordinating Committee and uh, T3. So your words with the consultants are expected to finalize the plan by the end of March. Um, the only other thing I'd like to say is that Tree Canada confirmed their continued support for Charlottetown's post Fiona restoration program, worth it with a grant of $50,000. Together, we will continue operation relief with the trees for Charlottetown homeowners and the restoration of forested natural areas in 2024. So, thank you, Your Worship. And if there's any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Okay. <clears throat> the report's there is in your package, so please adhere to the report and What's in it? Councilor Twill. So it's just so I understand it perfectly, if it's not in the report, you can't ask a question, right? That's right. Wow. You know what? In all my years as a member of city council, yep. I've never, ever, ever experienced this. Okay. And I've been around here longer than everyone. Okay. Thank you. So anyway, I just want that for the public record. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Seeing none. 
Okay, next report, 6.4, finance, audit, tendering, and, tendering and administration. Councilor John McAleer, and there is one resolution. Thank you, Mayor Brown. Um, the uh, Finance Audit and Tendering Committee uh, met on January 17th. Uh, the minutes are as, uh, circulated, um, circulated in your package there. Um, and and uh, as well, there's the uh, there's the one uh, one resolution that uh, will be uh, will be on the floor. Um, and in addition, um, uh, the Finance Committee uh, with the uh, weather playing havoc uh, did not meet recently. But what I did uh, ask uh, Elner and uh, our our staff to do, uh, led by Dan Jenkins. Uh, uh, is to give, uh, and it's on your desks, um, an update um, uh, of where we are with our uh, budgeting process and some timelines. Um, there's, uh, you can uh, see kind of where we're, uh, milestones that we're uh, hoping to hit. Uh, Betty and, um, and Danny are here to answer any questions you may have is that unfolds between now and the next uh, next few weeks, and I know uh, I know Councillor uh, Tweel, you were uh, 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 concerned with just kind of where we were and the update on the procedural bylaw. If you look on the second page there, there's uh, there's a bit of a Procure procurement uh, bylaw. Excuse me, yeah, procurement bylaw. Uh, there's uh, a bit of a an update as to where we are with that. Uh, certainly getting close with it, I do feel. Um, and, and again, if there's any, uh, any particular questions uh, around that or the timelines for the uh, completion of where we're trying to get with the budget, um, I'll do my best. And if I can't, uh, there's staff here to answer any questions you, you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor McLear. Councillor Twill. I wanted to ask a question about the $25,000 that's approved by management to each department, but I guess I can't ask that question either, can I? Is it in the report? I have no idea. No, it's not in the report. So, no. so it, was, it was approved by your committee, uh, but $25,000 where managers can spend $25,000 without coming to council or coming to their respective standing committees. Yeah, that'd be under the procurement bylaw. It, it would be so, connected to it. So, so let, him, my, let, him, let him ask the question. So, so am I able to ask that question? It's part of procurement, yeah. Oh, is it? Okay, okay yeah, good. it is, good. yeah. Okay. All right, here's the question. Back two or three months ago, it was in your report that $25,000 was eligible for each manager to spend without coming to city council. Now, that's a policy decision. My question is, who approved the policy? That's in the procurement uh, uh, prerequisites. That's in the procurement uh, policies and bylaw the council is going to be dealing with at a later date. So my question is, who determined or created the policy to allow for that to happen? Okay, Councilor McLear. Um, I'd uh, ask uh, Betty uh, maybe to uh, give us an update uh, on that, if she would, please. Betty French, Manager of Finance. Thank you, Your Worship, and thank you, uh, Councillor McAleer and Councillor Twill for the question. Um, we were seeking clarification about the procurement policy. Our existing procurement policy has has various thresholds for different things. It what we didn't find it entirely clear as to when something had to come to council. So we were seeking clarification. The common practice had been if it was less than twenty five thousand, it did not have to come to council for approval. And so we brought that forward to finance, and then it came to council for clarification as to was that the intention and, and was that acceptable. I don't have the policy right in front of me, but it, I know it had $4,000 and less could be dealt with by a limited purchase order or on a credit card from $4,000 to $25,000 needed uh, three quotes, but it wasn't clear. It further along said, 
when council awards the tender, but it didn't really give specifications because tenders are not required unless it's greater than $25,000. Yeah. So, yeah, just, just one second. Uh, Tracy, what did you say about a resolution that was passed? Well, there was a resolution passed on October 12, 2023, as per procurement policy, departments may approve procurements of less than $25,000 Canadian before taxes. What was the vote on that? And that council approval is required for all pr procurements over 25000 What was the vote? 10-0? 8-0. Eight, uh, Who was missing? Uh, Councillor Duran, Councillor Twill. Okay, so you're missing. So yeah. we, we, we did pass the resolution. There was a resolution. So, so, so a resolution was yeah. passed by City Council yes. to allow for managers to spend up to 25000 because I did ask it back a few months ago. You remember that, Council McAleer, chair, as chair of the Finance Committee? Yeah. And at that time, I was not told a resolution was passed by this council. No, no, but it was in your previous minutes. So anyway, yeah. anyway I'm bringing okay. it up. So again, that, that decision was made by City Council yeah. to approve, to allow... Managers, is that, would, would that be the same for all managers yeah, in Red ma City's corporation? Yeah. Manager's a manager. Yes. Would you say the same for the mayor's office, too? Uh, no, no. That's operations. Come on, let's. Okay, Councillor Bernard. Thank you, Councillor Twill. Just quickly, you were Yeah, we're moving on. Um, that's always been the process. It's always been up to 25000 After that, I had to go to tenders. But before that, you'd go to a request for proposal, they go to three quotes. But it's always been up to that. I think they just refined the wording. So I did when we passed it in October. Thank you. Councillor Beck. Yeah, the discussion I remember was that it was to try and expedite a lot of things that were coming through and were kind of getting rubber stamped anyway, if I remember the conversation correctly. And um, so they were... Purchasing was getting held up for uh, items that were coming to us and we were looking at it and saying, yeah, you know, and so that's what I remember from the discussion. So I think that might be something that was down by red tape. We talked about, yeah. Okay. If you look at the resolution, it's 196. Did you get a copy? Do you want to read it? Yep. Thank you, Worship. Finance, Audit, Tendering, and Administration uh, Committee Resolution Number 1. Moved by Councillor McAleer, seconded by Councillor McCabe. Be it resolved that by way of public tender, the City of Charlottetown offer uh, the structures on the City-owned residential lot at 54 Maple Avenue, PID 416222, for sale and be removed from the property. And further, that the Mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. Questions called. Now, let me just get to the vote. Okay. Okay, sorry, just one second. Oh, I just have to go back. This, this one's gonna take the time. <laughs> You're still, uh, okay, everybody voted? Please vote. Good, can I tell Tracy? Good, Tracy. It's two people haven't voted, Councillor Bernard and Councillor Beck. Okay, well, you ready? Okay, we're all in, 10-0. Hey we're, hey, we're doing our part. Okay. Our next report is, just one second. And it's Councillor Justin Matart, Human Resources. Councillor Matart. Pressure. Yep, you're good. Thank you. Um, you'll notice in your package it does indicate that the Human Resource Committee did not meet this month. Uh, that is an error. In fact, we met on January 18th, and the discussions were uh, operational budgets, 
So I uh, apologize for that not being in here, but the minutes of that meeting will be in your next package and it's been moved on through finance. So if there's any questions regarding that meeting, I'll do my best. Uh, our manager's not here this evening and I'll try to uh, take your questions. So just to clarify, your meeting was on the budget? Just the budget? Okay, so questions should be about the budget. Councillor Toyle. Thank you, uh, Councillor Murtart. My question is, uh, there's been a lot of discussion over the last number of weeks of uh, cities corporation hiring different personnel and and I think a lot of that would be vented through your committee in terms of the organizational structure um, can you tell me whether or not council has approved the organizational structure and the positions that we we've, we've been experiencing in terms of every once in a while we'll get an email a new hire for this position a new hire for that position uh, it could be at the senior level, it could be at the mid-management level, and how does that really fit in in terms of the operational budget that uh, your committee uh, uh, is, 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 has explored, has assessed, and, and is going to be recommending to council? Because a lot of these positions are, are coming through and they're, be, and, they're, and they're being hired. And what is the impact and effect on the budget? And can these positions um, be be um, hired if it hasn't yet to be proved by council. Okay. So, Councilman Tart, did, did you have those discussions in your budget presentation at that last meeting? So what I can say to that, if we're strictly sticking to the discussion that was had during the meeting is, um, our department, like others, came to the budget meeting to discuss the operational components uh, to bring forward into the 24-25 uh, fiscal period, uh, but also identified a couple initiatives uh, that would be positions that would be for the HR department. So we don't have discussions regarding all of the other initiatives that are being asked within yeah. each of the departments. They will come forward, my understanding is they'll come forward into the finance, um, into finance, then which will then come collectively to council to be vetted through in our com upcoming meetings to determine the priorities uh, based on our budgets. And uh, so any hiring that is occurring as to what's coming out, my assumption would be, and I'm, I, I, I don't know if I should speak to it or not, but my assumption would be as those are already approved positions from the current operational budget that we're operating in right now, uh, or any ability for our CAO here to exercise her ability to backfill positions, whether it be temporary um, nature or, um, you know, loss of people moving around and coming and going. But in, in directly in the meetings that we're having would not be about approving or yeah. disapproving any budgets regarding staff at this point lately. Um, we've certainly had conversations um, with regard to the K KPMG report and, and uh, recommendations that were made around positions. Um, so uh, I'll give the uh, CAO an opportunity in the absence of uh, yeah. Emily, our manager, if you'd like to say something. Otherwise... Uh that's about all I can give you. Uh, I think what you said is quite clear. Your meeting on January 18th was about your own budget. Hey, Jar. Anything else is what will come up when we meet as a council as a whole to discuss all the initiatives. Councilor Twill. Yeah. Thank you. I Second question. I appreciate your response, uh, Councilor Matart. So maybe you know, as you would say, you're only dealing with hires in your uh, in your own department. So can somebody help me? in terms of no new hires, no, no new hiring has taken place before uh, our budget's gonna come down the end of March. So there's no new hirings, there's no new positions, no. there's nothing new. Okay. Everything, everything, everything is a result of the previous budget in terms of hires, hiring that is taking place, the recent hirings that are taking place in the city's corporation. I'm just looking for a yeah. clarification. And whether it's you or the CAO, I'd be happy for, yeah. to uh, get, I was, get an answer. Do you want to so, yeah. uh, you? Thank you, uh, Councillor Tweel. Uh, that's certainly a question I don't think I am um, in a position to answer, but I will hand it over to the CAO who can help address your question regarding positions that are being hired uh, in, uh, in this current state that we're in now. CAO Eleanor Muhammad. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, so council has a role in this by approving permanent positions, approving and creating permanent positions, okay? So the positions that have been hired were approved in last year's budget. 
Now we do have a staff member who's acting in a role who's taken on extra duties mm -hmm. from their current role. The position will be proposed as part of the budget process. We needed extra support, so that's why we've decided to do this. The other thing is, through the KPMG report and work that's been done, staff have expressed a need and a want to be able to have training in internal succession opportunities to prepare them for leadership positions. So providing the opportunity for someone to act in a director role, it gives them a chance to try on the position and to develop the type of skills that they're going to need to be successful in getting into one of those director positions. Okay. So that's what has been going on. Any permanent positions no. that Councilor have been Toyo. hired were approved by council. Okay. Okay, no, no, we're, you've already asked you, the, so the yep, yep, okay. Protective and emergency services. I don't think we have any other more, any questions? Councilor Ramsey. Thank you for that, your worship. Uh, we met on January 31st and it was all about budgets again. And uh, if you have any questions, but I'd like to publicly state and thank the Charlottetown Police for all their hard work in the Byron case, uh, the Byron car case, I'm sorry. And especially our police chief who took this file years and years and years ago. So on behalf of council, and I, I think I am speaking for mayor and council, I would like to personally thank you for, for doing all that work. Any questions, we'll go from there. And Councilor Ramsey, again, the questions are pertinent to your report. A lot of it was on the budget, correct? Yes. Okay. Councilor Will. Uh, my question is, again, I don't know if it's relevant, relevant or not, but it's certainly relevant to me. Um, it's regarding a presentation the Chief made uh, last Thursday at a community meeting uh, that was held with regards to the relocation. It, wait, now, is that in the minutes? No, it's not. It's not. In the no. No, it's not there, Council Twill, please. So it's concerning my ward. Yeah. It's concerning nope. about drug usage. Yeah. Yeah. Presentation was made by the yeah. Chief of Police. Yeah. But I can't ask the question. No, you oh, can that's great. No, Thanks. you 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 can submit a question or an email to the chief and the deputy chiefs. Councilor Beck. Yeah. Uh, just a couple of uh, comments, I guess. Chief on page two oh eight. Uh, I know before when we were talking about hiring the extra police officers, is it two, is it four, is it six? I know we had a number before, it was uh, 29 that we were short. And uh, compare, comparing to the uh, regional averages by the uh, study that was commissioned. But I notice in the report here it says we're short 19. I'd just like to get that clarified for the public record. Are we talking 19, are we talking 29? just to clarify that, or where we are. I just want to make sure if we're looking at a public record, can we have that clarified just so everyone on page, and again, it's under the new initiative for additional police officers chief in the bottom of the first paragraph. Just if you could clarify that for can, the public. Can record. I just ask, Councilor Ramsey, do, do you want to defer to sorry. the chief? Yeah, sorry, Councilor Ramsey. Yeah. Yes, I do. What he needs, Chief? You don't mind, Chief? Your Worship, um, Chair, Councillor Beck, um, the number nineteen is correct. It was twenty-nine um, through several initiatives, both uh, provincially and um, and positions identified in last year's status quo budget. We hired. Uh, we will uh, have identified um, ten positions and brought that number down from twenty-nine to nineteen. So um, 19 is the go forward number. Uh, there was four positions funded by the province. Uh, city Council approved the hiring of six. Uh, takes the number to 19. Councilor Ramsey? Councilor Twill? There was uh, an article in the newspaper regarding cameras being installed in Stratford and the city, Charlottetown City Police is involved with uh, installing those cameras. Uh, do I have the ability to ask a question? Is it in the report? It's not in the report, but it was in the Guardian. Oh, wow, okay. No, you can, again, can't, you can see. Can can okay, yeah. good, no, thank you. Send him an email. Thank you. Right, Chief? Fine. Okay, I think they're going to Cornwall, too. Councilor Bernard. Thank you, Worship. Um, 
I'm just wondering, uh, Mr. Chair, um, usually when, when an ask for a, a new uh, position in a, in, a, in a department, it becomes a new initiative. I'm just wondering what happened here. I, I see that the, uh, the new fire inspector position was deferred and your minutes, but yet it's in finance as uh, they went to finance to make a presentation to finance. I'm just wondering what happened there, because usually your committee would have to approve that first, and then it's and then it's a new initiative that goes to finance. I'm just wondering why the difference there. And I thank you Council for bringing Ramsey. it up, Councillor Bernard, because I was reading that myself last night, going through the package, and and I don't understand why it didn't come to us first, why it went right to finance. So maybe the fire chief can answer that, but. Like I was, and then I watched that meeting on YouTube too when I was saying, what's going on here? But anyway, Chief, if you would like to answer that. Okay, Chief, maybe. Your Worship, uh, through the Chair and uh, Councilor Bernard. Uh, yes, what happened there was uh, the initiative was put together. It wasn't a new initiative. Uh, both the competition that had just been run and the uh, advance, or the available finances that we had in our own operational budget to get the uh, new fire inspector in play and then ask for that going forward. Uh, the reason it was deferred, um, or, or first off, the reason it went to finance first is when I had the package together, the reports and the possible resolution, um, our, our uh, council meeting had been moved a week and finance was before that and in order to catch council, it was a cart before the horse type of presentation, but that is why the, the, the uh, committee meetings flip-flopped and so I was into finance first to, and then got to our, our committee uh, before a council. But um, as because of that uh, misstep and because of the discussions that happened during the council meeting is why is the, uh, the position is deferred, if that answers the question. Second question there, Councilor Bernard. Yeah, I just wonder why it, ever, why it went to the finance in the first place. I mean, it's, even though, if there's, even your, your money's in this year's budget, it still wouldn't have had to been go through your own Protective Services Committee for them to approve or deny before it goes to finance. So, anyway. Chief, and maybe? I agree that was just the misstep with that is, is the one flipped off. It's been corrected. Okay. Thank you, sir. Parks, Recreation, Leisure, Councillor Mitchell Tweel, Chair of said, said, said uh, Standing Committee, page 221. I'll do my best to answer any questions. Thank you. Well, it's an easy night for Frank. Thank you, Frank. <laughs> Water and sewer utility. Oh. You had a question? I didn't see your green light. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, yeah, no, just on um, Councillor Twill on the, the uh, I guess it was raised, it says here um, on reports, before the capital budget, of course, Councilor Bernard inquired about the possibility of utilizing the portable squash courts from Canada Games for the new Simmons Arena. A PR, or anyway, Parks and Rec stated staff will need to collect the information on this request and assess what could be possible. Well, I, I, I remember those courts at the uh, at the Canada Games, and, and I think I understood they ended up in Stratford, and I, I just wondered who is the uh, the gatekeeper on those, or are they? Is it a piece of infrastructure that could, that could possibly land in the city's uh, inventory, or is it the property of uh, Stratford? Councilor Twill. That's a good question. That's a really good question. Um, I know we, we had those discussions. Uh, some feel that, that uh, because of the success of the, the Winter Games, and, and the utilization of the Trade Center, that we think this would be uh, a wise, prudent uh, use of space for, uh, for that sport that you just mentioned. Uh, we asked our staff to explore it. Uh, we'd have to work through the board, and our city's representatives on that board. Um, but we're, we're exploring all options, and that's one of the ones that uh, was discussed and uh, we feel that it'd be a great, great use of space, space uh, because it's not always being, uh, it's not, a, uh, not always being operational. So uh, 
we're still at the exploratory stages, okay. I would suggest. Well, that's a good question. Councilor Bernard. Thank you, Worship. But I'll, I'll just, for a little clarity, um, Stratford do own them. It was given to them they, through Canada Games. Uh, my understanding is that they're in storage and there's no plan to use them any time in the near future. So it was brought up that maybe uh, our staff want to inquire about that and see if there's a way that uh, possibly the city of Sherald can get them and if we can use them in the new facility. So that's why I was asked. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just one second there, Councilor Ramsey. We don't want to send them up. Councilor Beck, did you have a question? I thought you had a question. You're good. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Twilley, you want to sum up there? Yeah, yeah just hit your button. Today in the Guardian, um, uh, Billy McMillan, coach of the, uh, Billy McMillan, sorry, Billy McGuigan, uh, just was recorded that he's won his 500th game. Uh, two or three years ago, we attempted to uh, recognize uh, Billy's achievements, but we couldn't because of the COVID. COVID uh, social distancing, and we weren't able to recognize him for his achievements. And since then, he's achieved many more. So I'm going to be asking staff to look at uh, putting together some kind of a program so we can rec recognize Billy's achievements. And I just wanted to bring that to your attention. He's done a tremendous job, and uh, I think we should officially recognize uh, Mr. McGuigan and his accomplishments. Mr. McGuigan, thank you very much. That's great. Okay, Frank. Water and wastewater utility, Councillor Bob Duran. Thank you, Mayor Brown. Uh, the Water and Sewer Utility Committee uh, met with our regular meeting on January 11th and a special meeting on January 23rd. Uh, we were discussing our, our budget, pre-budget, what's coming forward. Um, we don't have any resolutions for your consideration today, but uh, if anybody has any questions on, on the minutes, I'll try to answer them as best I can. Thank you. Thank you, Councilor Draw. Okay. Thank you, Mr. McEwen. Public Works. Oh, good. Public Works. Councilor Mc Julie McCabe, Ward 9. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, before I just get into our report, I think I'd like to recognize the staff of Public Works, too, for the great diligent work that they did after our big snow dump in the city, getting our city back in order. I know that they worked tirelessly to make sure our streets and our sidewalks were opened. And um, I just, I think it's important that we recognize the work that that department did. So thank you to our department. Um, our committee met on the 11th of January, again February 1st. The minutes for those meetings are in your package. The Civic Board for Persons with Disabilities met on January 17th, and you'll notice that the minutes for that meeting were uh, put on your desk this evening. We're trying to get our minute takers um, back in order so that they're included in our package, so I'm hoping that will happen. We have a busy night of resolutions tonight. We do have nine resolutions that are going to come forward. And to be fair to Councillor Tweel, you know, I think you know, tonight we're saying that we have to stick to what's in our report, and that's important, but what, that's following our process. And for anybody that wants anything added to our Public Works Committee meeting, it would be important if we could have that questions or uh, agenda items asked to us before the 23rd of February. We meet on the 28th again. This just allows staff the opportunity to come prepared to our committee meeting. It, it allows us time to know if, if it's an agenda item that actually belongs at a committee meeting or if it's an agenda item that's more operational that you can work through. So I do agree that Councillor Tweel wants to have the opportunity to discuss things, but I also agree that we have to follow the proper process in order to make that happen. So anybody for anybody that has anything for public works, the 23rd of February would be the deadline for our next committee meeting yeah. for this month. And be Thank you. Any questions, I'll do my best to answer. And that be the same for all the standing committees. That's a good point. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we have nine resolutions. <laughs> Councillor Beck? Do you want me to ask this Doug, before, before it, we get to the resolution? Yeah, the resolu is it right to the minutes? Yeah, yeah. yeah go ahead. Yeah. Just, uh, I, I was just curious about a few things. Page 272, there was a reference, maybe I'll ask all three questions at the same time. Councillor McCabe, if that's okay. <clears throat> um, could you maybe clarify, there was referencing a path to connect University Avenue to Brown's Court. If you could maybe just 
uh, elaborate a little bit on that, what that is all about. Um, and then on page, under the new initiatives, there was some talk about, um, and I get the I get the rationale for it. We're looking at, like currently, uh, all our uh, electrician services, like we're looking at hiring a new electrician, and currently all our services are contracted out. Uh, we're looking at the same thing with the uh, consultant work by hiring the new municipal engineer. I'm just wondering if you could give me a little bit or give council a little bit of enlightenment as to what are our current costs for the consultants and what current electrical costs are we, are we, uh, are we um, experiencing right now because of the services that we're contracting out? So I guess three questions in one. Uh, consultants' costs, electricians' cost, and just a little bit more clarification on the uh, connector from Browns Court to University Avenue, and either through you or through nope. the yep. chair. Okay, of the those were those were discussions. Uh, the Browns Court. So I think it was probably four years ago, maybe three years ago. Now, council adopt we approved a master sidewalk, uh, active transportation master plan. In that plan, we also indicated at that time that this was a working document, meaning that different things are going to happen in our city where we might have to go back and look at certain things and have them considered for uh, being put on the list or being moved up the list, depending on the severity of what's happening. I will say that His Worship has indicated that that's an area he's heard many concerns about in that area, and what that basically was was asking the engineers of the city to have a look again to see if it meets the criteria, if it's an area that they feel would make a, a difference to put that on our list somewhere up the line because of increase in family, because of different reasons. So that discussion happened at committee level um, at that point. As far as the wish list for every department that's coming in, I'm hoping and I'm, I'm requesting for our CAO to have a look at that is one thing, you know, we're talking about council being counselors and operations being operations and trying to stay in our own lane through the whole thing. And there's a lot of wish lists, as you can see through our reports, that people have been able to justify why they need these new positions, how they're going to save money. And I'm hoping that our big senior management team, as well as uh, our directors and our CAO, prior to coming to our budget, come with the list of what do they feel is the priorities for the city that they need to run our city operationally versus us having to determine what are the most important positions um, operationally in the city. So my ask, and I've already kind of clearly spoken that, I'll say it out loud for the record, is one thing we did a few years ago was that list came to us and it was already identified what they kind of had agreed on, that these were the priorities on the, you know, they worked that stuff out before they came to us looking for the money. I think that's important. So. The electrician and all of these things are wish lists from the Department of Public Works, why they feel that those should be justified. I can't tell you that they're needed more than a new fire chief or a new uh, comms person or whatever. For me personally, I'm hoping that list gets uh, simplified and comes to us in a nice clean package that we'll be able to look at. Councillor Beck, second question. <laughs> yeah. No, I wasn't, lo I wasn't looking for who should get what or anything like that. I was just, the, the, I'm all about efficiencies. I'm all about smart hiring, using our money appropriately. I just, it came to my attention when I was looking through there that, you know, we are spending a lot of money. It would be the same discussion we would have had about potentially hiring our lawyer, right? In, in terms of, you know, looking at contracting out legal services or is there stuff that we can be doing? So there's all kinds of questions about that. And what's the ultimate value or what is the right approach to be taken? So I guess I'm just trying to get a little bit of a handle or maybe it can come up a little bit later on at some point in time during the budgetary discussions in terms of comparing if we're looking at the uh, electrical services or if we're looking at the engineering services, consultant services, um, I'm all about making the right decision, but I think in order for us to make the right decision, we have to be informed, and um, that's kind of what it is. I'm, I'm not questioning any of uh, Manager Adams' uh, professional judgment in any way, shape, or form. It's not that. It's just about trying to understand, and I, I see the benefits in what is being asked here. I think it's just important that we understand fully 
before making a decision, because it's ultimately us who are going to be making the decisions on what gets approved and what does not. So just part of the understanding process, I think, for all of us to think about as we work through the budgetary process coming up over the next few weeks. Thank you. Councilman McCabe. Thank you, Your Worship. And I agree. And I, I, I didn't think you were questioning. I think everybody's coming with their wish list and we're going to be playing Santa. Um, and in that, I think that's where they have to come, though, and they have to have that picture kind of ironed out and, and more clarified around what do they need and what here's your dollar sign and what do you need to, to make this city work the best you can with this amount. We will get to those discussions. But, Scott, if you have anything to add about your wish list, it's pretty clear, but... Elf, you know, your elves can find you, but we'll have to see what happens on budget time. Okay. Okay. Resolution start at 282. First resolution. Public Works Committee resolution number one, moved by Councillor McCabe, seconded by Councillor McAleer. Be it resolved that Council approve the proposed change order for additional funds for Brackley Point Road Depot change orders in the amount of 190100 dollars and six cents plus applicable taxes for the general contractor Fitzgerald and Snow Limited and that funds be expensed from the department's existing 2023-2024 budget and further that the mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution resolution sorry okay questions Colin just let me Okay, you can vote. All in. You ready, Trace? 10 0. Okay. Good. Okay. Okay, you want to read the second one? Public Works Committee, uh, resolution number two, moved by Councillor McCabe, seconded by Councillor McAleer. Uh, be it resolved that Council approve as per the conditions of the public request for proposals for engineering services, Water Street Rehabilitation, the submission of WSP Canada Incorporated in the amount of $89,000, $280 plus all applicable taxes, and that the funds be expensed from the department's existing 2023 uh, 2024 and the 2024 2025 capital budgets. And further, that the mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. Questions called? Okay, please vote. All in? Someone didn't vote. Councilor Twill, just one sec. Okay, that should count for three times. There it is. 10-0. Okay, 10 0. Next one there. Okay. Public Works uh, Committee Resolution Number Three, moved by Councillor McCabe, seconded by Councillor McAleer. Be it resolved that Council approve, as per the conditions of the public request for proposal for Engineering Services 2024 Sidewalks, the submission of CBCL Limited in the amount of $53,500 plus all applicable taxes and that funds be expensed from the department's existing 2023-2024 and the 2024-2025 capital budgets. And further that, the mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. Questions called? Press, press the little button. OK. 
Okay, let's see. 10, 0. Okay, there. CAO. Works. Public Works Committee, resolution number four, moved by Councillor McCabe, seconded by Councillor McAleer. Be it resolved that council approve as per the conditions of the public request for proposal for development charges background study, the submission of Hemson in the amount of $99,400 plus all applicable taxes, and that the funds be expensed from the department's existing 2023-2024 and the 2024-2025 capital budgets, and further that the mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard <coughs> contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. Councillor Drawn. Thank you, Mayor Brown. I was reading in the notes there, but I, I still, it's not clear to me what this is. Could, could someone explain it, please? Thank you. Councillor McCabe. I'm going to let the manager explain it so that you get the right information. Chief Engineer Scott. Thank you, Worship, through to Councillor Draw. Um, so what this is, is a hiring consultant to um, help us staff develop what we call development charges. Um, and what these charges are would be, uh, say, an individual. It, it, it wouldn't be against someone who's developing a neighborhood. So you're building, if you have someone coming in and building the streets and subdividing the lots, it's not against those folks. It's an additional charge that we would look to get at time a building permit issued. And what it is, is as a neighborhood grows, there's more residents in that area. And that puts pressure on the existing infrastructure around the neighborhood. Um, on existing streets. And so eventually we have to upgrade those roads sometimes earlier than we anticipate just because of those additional stresses that are being put on um, on these existing streets that the city already owns and manages. Um, so it could be things, uh, th this would be a fund um, that could be used for uh, sidewalks in areas that don't have sidewalks or multi-use pathways upgrades to water and sewer, upgrades to our roads and infrastructure. So it's, it's, a, it's a separate fund that would be dedicated to those types of upgrades as a result of this growth that we're seeing around the city. So it would only be against any new building permit for a new, uh, a new dwelling or, or a new multi-unit complex. Uh, it would be. So this is something that you're seeing around, uh, it's quite standard around uh, North America when you do a big research. Um, and um, we're looking at uh, um, we're looking at ways to be able to fund. You know, we're we're in an area where rapid growth, and we a lot of transportation or a lot of pressures in infrastructure. And this is a way to recoup some of those fees or, or some of the, that fund that uh, money that it takes to maintain and upgrade that infrastructure prematurely. Councilor Twill, we'll come back to Councilor. Now, this particular issue here had a lot of discussion at the committee level. In fact. I think you yourself, you, you yourself, Mr. Mayor, said that this was double, double, uh, charge. double charge. So I attempted on three or four occasions to get a decisive, unequivocal, clear answer. I know the manager tried to answer it. I'm not sure how decisive it was or how clear it was. But I think the thing that really concerned me, Mr. Mayor, is that you moved the motion and you said it was double charged. And I had a real struggle with it. I really did. And I'm having, still having a real struggle with it. So my question is, is this, in fact, double charging uh, someone that's looking to uh, purchase a home in, in a subdivision, and they're going to be sad, saddled with that additional cost? So I want to know that before I vote. Yep. Councilor McCabe, do you want to defer to the chief engineer? I think how I understood it just before, so I can give clarity to my understanding when we had discussion was when you call it a double dip, it's not a double dip to the resident person purchasing the home. The developers getting charged, they're hoping to put something in place where they're going to have to be a part of some of the infrastructure and stuff. They're, that's not before us yet. But this is a separate thing that as a new homeowner, there would be also a charge. So double dip. When it's double dip on the property, perhaps, but not double dip to the homeowner themselves. 
but Scott, maybe you could explain that. I, I, like that's as easy as I can grade three language it, but. So I guess the confusion may be, we use the word developer quite generally. So we have the individual that would build the roads and subdivide the lots. So this charge would not be in addition to them. They would be still doing building lots, putting in the underground infrastructure for those roads and then handing it over to the city like it currently is. This would only be when you come in for a building permit, whether you're a contractor, or homeowner, or who's ever asking for the permit for a brand new build, there would be the additional charge for infrastructure upgrades to the existing streets, so the, the older infrastructure that surrounds the new, de new development. So, Councillor Twill, did he answer your question? So, um, would you say the same for any other uh, older neighborhoods, Scott, in terms of infrastructure that's being requested, continuously being denied, whether it be sidewalks or pathways, whatever the case may be, would you say the same thing, the same logic and the same rationale? Mr. Adams. If I understand the question, uh, um, sorry, your worship, through to Councillor uh, Tweel. If I understand the question, so these funds would be to upgrade existing infrastructure, could be sidewalks and multi-use pathways that are required as a result of new development around the area. Yes, that 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 is the goal. It's to help fund these projects when we are getting these large um, apartment complexes areas. You know, we're getting multiple buildings. Um, we're getting a lot more residents in a highly concentrated area, and the, sh the existing roadway didn't have sidewalks or multi-use pathways. The goal would be, instead of dipping into our typical annual capital expenditures, if this is kind of an extraordinary expense or premature to where we originally planned, then yes, we could dip into this fund and build that infrastructure. So that, so that is the goal, is to help us uh, you know, whether the storm where we're, you know, the development has been rapidly growing around the city uh, and it's been challenging to keep up um, and it's expensive to keep up. Uh, and this is a way to help uh, help with that. Councilor Duran. Thank you, Mayor Brown. And, and thank you, Scott, for, for attempting to answer this. But my concern is if you say, like, if a developer was putting in the roads, he's not going to pay for it. But if, if I wanted to build a house, I'm going to pay for it. So presently now, you, you know, you have to have drainage plans, you have to have building permits where we pay the city for the building permits, and then you pay to subdivide the lot again when you're selling things. And then when the homeowner buys the house, you know, there's tax on, on that. So he pays his yearly tax, whether it be four, five, six, seven thousand dollars $7,000, and then the city gets the, the money back to them a certain percentage. I find that you know, we're, we're in now what we're saying a housing crisis and we're putting, putting extreme amount of pressure on people as you look at your building permits. You know, it's, it's hard to get a building permit in the city of Charlottetown. It takes a long time, which costs money. Um, then, then you get a developer who's, who's, you know, gets approval at the bank and, and he's trying to build a place to help out with, with the housing crisis, to, to support the, you know, the residents here, to support our tax base. And now you're coming back with another uh, you know, penalty that, that the developer is going to have to pay. I mean, pretty soon what will happen is the developers will say, you know what, we're, we're, we can't keep giving more money every, every time we come to the table. It's on the developer. So, you know, I'm not going to be able to support this. I, I don't think it's fair. You know, you say, well, it's going to help pay for sidewalks or infrastructure. But that, that coincides with, you know, I buy a new house. So I'm buying a new house. I'm paying higher taxes. So that tax eventually gets back to, to the city or the province. Like, I just don't, I just, I just find this is, is too much pressure for developers to keep asking for more money, someone's got to pay it. So I, I can't support this. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Peck. Councillor McTard. Um, 
I thought we were being asked to, in this motion, to approve a study. Are we not? Yes. To look at this Correct. whole matter, and then the matter will come back to us at some point in time. Because, yeah. so I, I think we, I think it's prudent to do. Um, if we're going to be looking at growth, if we're going to look in, at a lot of expansion, and maybe we do enter into, maybe we do go down this road, maybe we do not go down that road. But my understanding of this motion is that we're, we're, we're trying to see whether it's something that we should be pursuing at a later time. So I would support the motion as it is, if I'm understanding it correctly. I am, I'm not missing anything, am I? Okay, so um, I would be supportive of it, it to see whether it's something that we should be entertaining or not. I think given the fact that we're going to be embarking upon some pretty significant changes here in the next little while, it may, it may be uh, a good idea to look at these sorts of things because there are going to be impacts. Our city's going to change. Our neighborhoods are going to change. Uh, our corridors are going to change. So um, I'd be supportive of looking at this. I'm not married to any, I don't have any preconceived uh, ideas to which way I would vote in the end, but I think we, given the fact that we're looking at um, potential impacts to our current infrastructure that we have, future development, I think it's, uh, it's the timing of it is actually not too bad. So I would, I would support the motion. Councilman Tarrant. Thank you, Worship, uh, to the chair. Uh, thank you, Councillor Beck. I think that was my, my question directly was, I was, as I was kept reading, I was thinking we were just doing a study uh, which would not outline exactly the, the framework. So if, if this is what this is intended to do, is to allow us to look at a future framework to allow us to collect some type of uh, revenue against properties and builds and help us with infrastructure. Um, you know, I think that's probably the best approach to do that and maybe that'll come back at a later time. So um, the only concern that I had with that then particular study is, you know, it, you know, it was $100,000 roughly, I think it was 99 or something along those lines. It's, it's, that's not a, it's not cheap for that study. So I'm not sure how intensive that study will be or what that will get us at the end of the day because um, we may or may not adopt what comes out of that. So um, I'm hoping that if we support this and go forward that we can get something as a framework that allow us to move forward in the direction that you want to do with this um, uh, developer, you know, build back or whatever it's called, will allow us to do that. So Absolutely. thank you. Okay, question? Question's, Questions gone. gone. Okay, hold on. All in. Sounds like the Racino. All in. Ready to go. Okay. Seven three. And I have just one second. Councillors. Bernard. Um Duran. And we opposed. Okay. And can you read the next resolution, CAO Eleanor Muhammad? Public Works Committee Resolution Number Five, moved by Councillor McCabe, seconded by Councillor MacLear. Be it resolved that Council approve, as per the conditions of the request for proposals for emergency services fleet repairs, the highest ranked submission of Dave's Auto Electric. Uh, in the amount of $100 per hour for service, excluding parts, plus all applicable taxes, and that funds be expensed from the police fleet services uh, existing 2023-2024 and the 2024-2025 operational budgets, and further that the mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. Question? Okay. Please vote. Please cast your vote. All in? Okay, Trace. 
Uh, Councilor Duran. Do you want to go, just do it again? And I'll resume. No, you have to press it. Did you press yay or nay? It's not showing up there, Rory. No, it's resume. Nine one, thank you, sir. Okay. Next one, uh, CAO. Committee resolution number six, moved by Councillor McCabe, seconded by Councillor McAleer. Be it resolved that council approve as per the conditions of the public tender for 5,500 series crew crab, uh, crew cab and chassis, the low uh, submission of Summerside Chrysler Dodge in the amount of $79,860 plus all applicable taxes, and that funds be expensed from the department's 2023-2024 capital budget, and further that the mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. Thank you. Question? Question of column. Please cast your vote. Good to go. Ten zero. Okay. CEO. Public Works Resolution Number Seven, moved by Councillor McCabe, seconded by Councillor McAleer. Be it resolved that council approve as per the conditions of the public tender for Hillsborough Hall Elevator, the submission of WM&M 1993 Limited in the amount of $687,787, plus all applicable taxes, and that $580,000 be expensed from the department's 2023-2024 capital budget, and the remainder be expensed from the 2024-2025 capital budget. And further, that the mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. I have Councillor Ramsey and Councillor Bernard. Councillor Ramsey. Thank you, Your Worship. I just want to be clarified, be clear in this. So there's 580,000 from last year's budget already in there, so we're basically looking at another 180, 100,000 or something along that line, right? 107. Yeah. Okay, thank you. No, I just want to be clear on it. Thank you. Councilor Bernard. Thank you, Rishup. Um, Just want to say thank you to the chair and the manager for moving this through. I know it was delayed for a little while because of the last tender submissions. Um, well needed out at the, out the Hillsborough Community Center. I'm just wondering, um, it does say that they don't expect to be completed by the summer. I'm just wondering, when do they plan on starting? Do we know? Councilor McCabe. I'm going to actually defer that to the manager, please. Chief Engineer. Uh, Your Worship, through to Council Bernard. I'll have to confirm that. I'll, I can follow up with you later this week okay. um, with those details. Okay, thank you. It's good to see. Thank you. Questions called? Please cast your vote. All votes cast. I can see easy with their arms. Ten zero. Can you read the next one, CAO Eleanor? Public Works Committee Resolution Number Eight, moved by Councillor McCabe, seconded by Councillor McAleer. Be it resolved that, as per the proposal municipal design guidelines, and as discussed in the attached report, the submission of EXP services incorporated in the amount of $265,512, plus all applicable taxes be accepted, 
and that a portion be expensed from the department's 2023-2024 capital budget and the remainder be expensed from the 2024-2025 capital budget and that the mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. Question? Questions count. Please cast your vote. <coughs> All in? Nine one. Councilor Duran opposed. You want to read the next one, please? CAO. Public Works Committee Resolution Number Nine, moved by Councillor uh, McCabe, seconded by Councillor McAleer. Be it resolved that, as per the conditions set out in the attached offer to sublease, the city agrees to enter into a three-year agreement with AG Growth in Incorporate International Incorporated for the lease of 10 McAleer Drive, PID 822932 and that the mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements to implement this resolution. Councillor Ramsey, Councillor Duran. Thank you, Your Worship, and thank you, Chair. Did we, uh, at our last meeting on this, when we discussed this, did we get all our questions answered? Like, like there's a lot of questions around surrounding this, and I just wondered if, yeah, you, no, if we got it all. Thank you. Councillor McCabe. That was in a closed meeting that we had the discussion. And at the end of the closed meeting, direction was given to staff to proceed to go ahead and to negotiate um, and then to bring back the conditions to council in an open session at that time. That's what I understood anyway. Yeah. Councillor Duran. Okay. Councillor Duran. Thank you, Mayor Brown, and thank you, Councillor McCabe. Um, I, like Kevin, there, were, there was a few questions we were, were waiting to get updated on. Um, I know this is a, a three-year lease agreement, but there, there was some consensus there of, of uh, you know, would there be, say, um, office space, or was this going to be uh, something that would uh, make our department fulfill all the needs so that that didn't come back so I like Council Ramsey had those questions so uh, you know we, we built a new building and we're just wondering is is this going to be the end all that we don't need to go down this road again or 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 what like what it, it's it's quite a it's quite a acquisition but I know that we we need it to a certain degree I'm just wondering where we can, you know, look for office space, all these things. I, you know, whether it's a big garage or whatever, whatever it is. I just, I didn't get the full information package, I guess, at the end. So, thank you. Councillor Bernard. Thank you, Rissa. Um I think as a city grows, we're always going to be looking for space. I think the location where this was was, was ideal. I think it was why we, a lot of us agreed. I think there was some questions that we wanted answered. One for me was, because um, it was talking about a three-year lease, I guess one for me was um, there was going to be discussion on lease to own, lease to buy, or first option to buy. Because if, if we're going to lose you for three years and somebody else is going to come in and, and, and take it without us having an option to buy it. And I don't see that here now. I may have missed it. I'm just wondering if that was, because we had discussed that at our meeting. I'm just wondering if that come up. Councilor McCabe, do you want to defer that or do you want to answer it yourself? Part of the negotiations, but I think that would have to go to Scott. Okay. I do Chief agree. Engineer. Okay. Uh, your worship through to Councillor Bernard. So this is just a three-year lease um, because there's two parties involved. We're subleasing it from the actual leaseholder. So we will now have those discussions right away with the building owner as well to um, to solidify that we there 
we know there has been tensions. Uh, they've already verbally spoken to our assistant manager, uh, the owner of the building, that is, um, uh, stating that uh, they want to give us the first right of refusal on the property. So now the we will work towards getting that in getting that in writing and work and making sure that happens very very quickly. Second question, Councilman Hart. I think I, I think I got it. I think it's so. If I heard you right, the the so it's basically being subleased for whatever lease it, sublease it to us. Then, but the owner of the building is prepared to sell it. And you're entering your negotiate separate negotiations with them. Those are the discussions we'll okay. be having. Perfect. Thank you, Councilor Twill. As discussed at our recent meeting, um, we keep seem to we seem to keep getting ourselves into these situations because we don't have a long term plan. And uh, whether it's asset management or you look in the look and look at the uh, uh, growth and development of the city, uh, the required space for our equipment, apparatus, personnel. Uh, it, it, it's clear to me that we, uh, you know, we're just treading water here. And I think staff's done a good job securing this property, but uh, this is only a quick fix. So, Mr. Adams, I'm going to reiterate one more time. We need a, a long-term plan uh, that requires property so that we can properly facilitate all of the departments in this city. Because we're not meeting that demand. We're not meeting those needs. And the sooner you get at that, the better. Okay. Questions, Questions called? Please cast your vote. Zero. And that's your report, Councillor. Thank you very much, Councillor McCabe. And the next report is strategic priorities. Councillor Beck. Yep. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you, Your Worship. So the Strategic Priorities Communication and Intergovernmental Cooperation Committee met on January 17th and January 29th. Draft minutes are included in your package. There are no resolutions for your consideration. Uh, there is a second reading of the procedural bylaw. And if there are any questions, I will do my best to answer them. Thank you. Councilor Twill. Uh, Councillor Beck, one of the notice of motions that I brought forward and we discussed at our last council meeting was I made a request. Uh, there was three three uh, three prong approach. One of the requests I made was to have the chief medical officer come in and make a presentation to city council so we can ask questions about uh, you know uh, the ideology philosophy of harm reduction. And what other uh, methodology or methodologies are in place across this country, uh, or North America for that matter? And I'm just wondering if uh, we can uh, expedite that. I think it'll be beneficial, so we can have that information uh, session. I think it's all part of educational, and I think it'd be prudent to have the chief medical officer appear before city council, so we get asked those uh, relevant, very important questions. Councilor Beck? Yeah, and uh, I do recall that conversation, uh, Councilor Twill, and also um, I'd, I'd like to, that to be a little bit more of a, a formal request, I guess. Uh, and I, I understood from the last conversation that there was going to be some background information provided by you to kind of ascertain in terms of what it was that we were looking for. and. Uh, so if there are if there's anything maybe you and I can chat about that at some point in time and we'll get if there's anything more if it's just simply uh, 
bringing in Dr. Morrison or requesting Dr. Morrison or someone come, we can we can look at that and we can make those arrangements. And I'll take those under advisement and we can see if we can make that happen. So is, that, is there anything more than that, just a request for her to come and explain about harm reduction? Is that what you're looking for? You know what, uh, uh, Chair, back it's more than... Look at different methodologies. I'm not. I don't want to be tied into one ideology. You know whether it's harm reduction. There's many, many different uh, perspectives across North America as to what works, what's not working, what's the best uh, for uh, people, mental health and addictions, and and equally important is the community at large. So uh, I think we need to have those discussions because uh, you know there's there's a lot of uh, Articles that are being written in the national newspapers. I've attempted to send them to all members of city council, whether it be uh, the Ottawa Citizen, National Post, uh, other newspapers across the country. Many articles that are being written. These articles are very in-depth articles, very detailed and good analysis. And I and I think when we we're trying to get uh, an understanding of what's taking place across Canada, and even down in the states for that matter then we can have a real good discussion with the chief medical officer and uh, what truly is the best methodology because it's affecting this city and it's affecting this city dramatically and it's important to have those discussions so we can become much better informed as a city council and effectively be able to represent our constituents because <laughs> to be quite candid with everyone in this room it's simply not working. Yeah. It's simply not working, so that's why I, uh, one of the motivations for bringing it up. Yeah. Okay, uh, Councilor Matard. No, Councilor uh, Matard. To, to thank you, Your Worship, to the chair, um, Councilor Tweel. I certainly, uh, you know, support and agree with you having uh, Dr. Morrison come in and present to us on harm reduction or, or any group for that matter. I'm just wondering, I guess, to go through the the motions of going through a motion and a resolution on the floor. Would this not be any different as we have the mayor or the city to request an actual meeting? I think that would be a meeting that would yeah. be supported by, yeah. by Dr. Morrison or off. I mean, it might not happen tomorrow, but it certainly seems like something that they would, they would be happy to come in and speak to us about, or mm -hmm. they should be happy to come to speak to us about yeah. it so that we can have a better understanding. So I'm just wondering if we, you know, I appreciate what you put that forward, but do we need that or do we need yeah. the CAO to reach out um, and request at some point a special meeting with council to have some formal um, discussion or presentation? Yeah. Maybe we can craft some questions that we might want to address prior to that yeah. and might be able to touch upon. So yeah. I, I just want to put that out there yeah. as well. Is why don't we just ask for the- yeah. Her team was here back in January of 2023, so it's, she can just come back with her team. Remember that? True, and that was specific to the overdose prevention yeah. site, and I get that. So maybe we can come back, but now that's been a year, and we may have more questions. Okay. And our landscape has certainly changed as a result of that over the last year. So I think we need to come back and have that meeting again. Thank okay. you. Councilor Mackler, we'll come back. Thank you, Mayor Brown. Um, uh, Councilor Beck, I just wondered if, um, to throw a request out, um, and if it falls on, on your uh, committee or not, um, I, I suspect perhaps it does. With the recent uh, housing announcement with the $10 million of funding, I'm just wondering, would it be uh, would it be possible, I know going forward there's going to be lots of questions probably that we as councillors are going to be receiving, and um, it would be nice to get, um, I guess, an, an understanding uh, as to um, what that um, what that program is going to look like and how Council, qualified Council McAleer, is that in the minutes? Pardon me? No. That's oh, okay. I appreciate that, but we, we will follow up. But I know that's that was just called by point of order. Oh, okay. All right. Councilor Beck. Excuse me. All right. Yeah, I, I'm glad you raised the point, Councilor Matar, because I think what's important, I think and I think that's kind of goes back to the original when we had this discussion at whatever meeting it was. I think it's important that we understand what we're asking for. It was no different than the uh, original notice of motion that Councillor Tweel put in. I think it was important to understand if we're going to bring people in, we want to know exactly what it is we're looking for. If if there are questions that you have, Councillor Matard or Councillor Tweel or any other councillor, please forward them through. And I, I, I made that request last time. I'll make it again. 
Um, and but I, I don't want to I want to make that time productive so if we're going to bring people into the chamber I want that to be a meaningful discussion I want it to be a targeted discussion and that we know exactly what we're focusing on as opposed to just bringing in willy-nilly for a presentation so yeah. certainly open to the discussion but I think it's important that it get framed so that we understand exactly what it is that we're trying to achieve in the yeah. discussion so um, yeah. They can be Again, forwarded. The, the, the avenue is open, mm -hmm. feed it through, and yeah. uh, we'll take it back through our committee. Yeah. We, they can forward those emails request to the CAO, and she can be the... Sure. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to go to the second reading of the procedural bylaw? Your Worship. To amend the City of Charlottetown procedural bylaw number 2018-19-G to enable notice of motions, education sessions, governance clarity, and move council meetings from Mondays to Tuesdays. Therefore, be it resolved that the City of Charlottetown procedural bylaw be read a second time and that said bylaw now be approved and adopted. Moved by Councillor Beck, seconded by Deputy Mary Ancock. Shall I carry? I'll pass. Okay, good. Yeah, that's right. The next meeting, monthly meeting, will be the second Tuesday of the month. So the next special it council meeting? Will be the second, no, the fourth Tuesday. No. no I call it the Beck Amendment. <laughs> okay. Number seven. Most. No, that was it. Yeah. Okay, number seven, motion to move into a closed section. Closed session. Eleanor, there's some confusion over there. Do we read it again? I think we read it the second time. No. That's it. There's no discussion. Okay. Motion to move into a closed session as per section 119, subsection 1A, B, and E of the Municipal and Government Act of Prince Edward Island. E, a matter still under consideration, on which the council has not yet publicly announced a decision, and about which discussion in public would likely prejudice a municipality's ability to carry out its negotiations, and it is hosting agreements. A, commercial information, which if disclosed would likely be prejudicial to the municipality of parties involved. B, information received in confidence, which if disclosed, would likely be prejudicial to the municipality or parties involved. And this is land negotiations forward slash agreement. So I need someone to move. Move by Councillor Ramsey, second by Deputy Mayor Yankoff. All those in favor, please raise your hand. All those against. Okay, so we're moving to closed session.
Go to order. Now she's going to just put it on there now. Okay. So we're back in, a, in an open session. Um, close the meeting for the closed session. End it. Call to order. Any declarations of conflict of interest? None. So we have two resolutions. CAO Eleanor Muhammad. Thank you, Your Worship. Economic Tourism and Cultural Development uh, Resolution Number Two, moved by Councillor McKinnon, seconded by Councillor McAleer. Be it resolved that Council enter into an agreement with a rights holder of a soon to be announced event and approve one time funding in the amount of $60,000 plus uh, applicable taxes as part of the 2024 2025 city budget and that the mayor and CAO are hereby authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements needed to implement this resolution. Questions called, so please cast your vote. Just hit the little button. Okay. 10-0. So that's, you got that down uh, Tracy, okay, next resolution, please. Economic Tourism and Cultural Development Committee Resolution Number 3, moved by Councillor McKinnon, seconded by Councillor McAleer. Be it resolved that Council enter into an agreement with a rights holder of a soon-to-be-announced event and approve one-time funding in the amount of up to $100,000 plus applicable taxes as part of the 2024-2025 city budget and that the mayor and CEO be authorized to execute standard contracts and agreements needed to implement this resolution. Questions, Questions called, please cast your vote. It's there, right there in front of you. Uh, what do you think, Councilor Matar? We're moving along quickly. <laughs> okay, 10-0. Need a motion to adjourn. Moved, second. All in favor? Thank you very much. Thank you.